Hello and welcome to Newton School. We are back again with another podcast and for today's episode we have with us Alka Pandey who's a data scientist at Unilever. So I'll leave it to you Alka. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hi Ranita. Thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Alka Pandey. I have close to 9 years of experience in data science, AI and ML. Uh, I have worked across different industries, CPG, uh, supply chain analytics, manufacturing related, uh, banking finance, um, and uh, and I have been recognized in the several uh, you know uh, forums as 40 under 40 data scientist, emerging leader in data and analytics. Currently working at Unilever as a data scientist and manager, leading a team of uh, data analysts, data engineers, data scientists, and business analysts. So over to you. Wow, that is great, Alka. I mean, you have achieved so much and, uh, you know, you have put in so much hard work. It is quite visible with all the achievements that you've got. So uh, my first question would obviously be, how did you get into this field and uh, how was your journey from, you know, your college days till uh, you live right now? Okay. So I, I am a BTEC graduate from computer science. Uh, I started my journey in 2014. Uh, at that time, I was working with Cognizant. We were doing very basic analysis. I was working on Excel, SQL, uh, and a lot of other programming languages. That is where I started analyzing the data a little bit. And then I moved on to join a very core analytics company in 2016, which was Latent View Analytics. Now, uh, Latent View Analytics uh, basically taught me what all machine learning is, what is AI, what does, how does data analysis work, what is business analyst, you know, things like that. I moved on uh, from there, worked uh, for a couple of years to, and then Bridge I2I, which is again another core analytics company, learned market mix, Python, uh, natural language processing, AI related, more advanced. Uh, things over there and then I moved uh, to Schneider Electric which is a product based company uh, worked there in supply chain for like three and a half years and now currently I'm working with Unilever uh, which is one of uh, India's you know top two or the most uh, the top FMCG companies uh, in India and globally as well so uh, I'm very, very fortunate to be here uh, and thank you for having me Ranita. Well it's a pleasure having you here so um like what were your what was your learning like and were there any ups and downs that you had to go through in this journey like obviously i can understand it cannot be always ups there might have been some difficult points in your life so uh, how did you tackle those you know difficult moments and what were those challenges okay so when i started my career uh, i did not have any background in statistics or maths related to data science so i had to start very much from the scratch and probably learn on the job which was a little uh, you know difficult initially i was supported by a few i was rejected by a few it was a lot of hardship a lot of struggle uh, no courses uh, like this right were available uh, at that time and then you know i learned the hard way and i learned on the job so uh, i'm fortunate to be here but yes i think there were a lot of ups and downs initially uh, and a lot of hard work had to be put in uh, because the data science industry also changed over the years. So uh, I think that was pretty much about, I think, learning and technological advances is something which probably, you know, is something that you should focus on even now. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, Alka, so what does a normal day in the life of a data scientist look like? A normal day would look like initially, you know, uh, checking your emails for anything urgent because you have multiple tracks uh, running uh, in your organization, probably multiple things that you must be working on. And uh, then you probably see which one to prioritize. And then based on the priority, probably you should do some data analysis, do some trend analysis. You should also, you know, if you're if you've already done data understanding, data analysis the previous day, then probably it's your model building day and you, you know, build your models. Uh, if you have already built your models, then probably you will be fine tuning your models. Uh, and then thinking about the industrialization, how do you scale those models? How do you, you know, bring in extra features, you know, and things like that. Plus, it's a lot of meetings as well. Uh, I think that's a that's a very combination of, you know, hands on meetings, managing people and things like that. Great. So now we all know how your day looks like. So uh, coming to my next question, 
if anybody wants to you know transition into this field after they have you know done their graduation or uh, you know any kind of degree in any other field is that actually possible and if so uh, what would their journey you know look like so it is absolutely possible to transition into a data science field in any field you are because everyone has been doing data analysis in one way or another isn't it so we have all been doing data analysis from a very long time in fact longer than uh, we know and probably you know it is no different you just have to have the mindset to learn and then apply it in your current work current industry as well that is where i would recommend you to start you should always start implementing analysis implementing data science implementing your uh, intuition into your current uh, project and then you move on from there you just you know keep on improving yourself scaling yourself seeing you know what else can be done you know uh, machine learning for instance can you apply machine learning in your uh, day to day life can you take the data of any whether you're working in support can you just you know take your data set and say you know can i group similar types of tickets together right if you're working in product side of things look at your product analytics how many viewers how many people are you know uh, what type of features are required and what type of audience do you have and things like that i think uh, probably you should start with applying this data science wherever you are and then if you want to transition pick up a particular course have a structured way of learning learn the industry learn the job and then move into the field that would be my recommendation because then you would have some exposure in your current organization current field of work plus the course will definitely help you scale up and then you can find or easily transition all right so uh, talking on the same lines you know becoming a data scientist what do you think are the core skills or values that a data scientist must have so a data scientist should have a lot of skills uh, some of them being uh, you know some acumen for data when you look at data you should not feel that you know you don't like it you should have a love for data and love for analysis uh, that is one second thing is you should be proficient from a technical standpoint you should understand statistics you should understand uh, mathematics for example linear algebra differentiation integration uh, what is slope uh, and things like that uh, plus i think statistics helps uh, then i think you get started with statistics and math and then you know build up to machine learning and then you build up to ai side of things then you build up to ml ops you know ci cd deployment cloud so there are a lot of tools and technologies actually required for a data science role so python being one of them it's a very popular choice right now because python is very robust mm -hmm. it can help you with um, uh testing it can help you with web de uh, deployment web development it can also help you with uh, you know scaling your solutions very compatible you know very much integratable with every other you know upstream downstream application so i think you know python is the right tool of choice uh, if you're working on big data of course it could be pyspark and scala or things like that but i think when you start it should be python and you should be proficient in statistics and maths related field all right so uh, since you've spoken about math statistics and also uh, you know python which is also a coding language so uh, does one require to have an in depth knowledge of these fields or you know the basics are enough or uh, how does one start with these uh, you know especially let's say python okay so that's a good question because different profiles in data science require different level of expertise in python for example business analyst would require little bit less experience data analyst would require intermediate level of python uh, data scientist would require more uh, you know intensive uh, use of python because they are the ones who will be creating uh, solutions by reading research papers and you know coding something from the scratch a lot of a lot of the times pre built libraries are available to us but it might not suit your business or it might not suit your business needs so in that case you will have to you know probably uh, you know work with uh, python a lot more than you would uh, for other uh, you know data science uh, uh, fields like business analyst or data analyst i think machine learning engineer and data scientist definitely required python is required so uh, adding to one more point python is very robust python can be learned for web development python can be learned for 
uh, uh, testing python can be learned for data science so you have to be sure that you know i want to learn python for data science it would make your job much easier it would make your learning very much simpler uh, because that way you will be able to you know uh, understand the basics you don't need to go into uh, object oriented programming in detail you can just start with the basics and then you can move on to pandas numpy sklearn learn scikit learn you know uh, those kind of things so it will be easier that way all right so um, i've also heard like i've uh, got a few queries as well is uh, you know dsa also required uh, for you know becoming a data scientist and also during the interviews uh, what kind of questions do they ask do they have uh, intensive coding related questions as well yeah so dsa it depends from organization to organization and the role that you are applying for so it might be that some organizations are not looking for dsa you know roles especially for a data scientist because you know probably they don't uh, they are in the very nascent or initial stages of their uh, data science journey and that time probably not required but if you are an experienced data scientist any company who is hiring for an experienced role probably they will be uh, expecting you to know a little bit of data science and algorithms as well okay so that goes without saying any language you know how dsa is important but as a beginner keep it on a second priority don't keep, give it too much priority because as a beginner you you should understand what is pandas what is numpy and then probably then you need to build your basics you can't do everything together so you know prioritize your learnings prioritize your skills yes so uh, you also mentioned about you know ai and uh, ml so how are these fields related to data science because we've all been hearing all about ai you know everywhere around us starting from chat gpt to you know bard and so many more coming in right now so uh, what is this hype about and you know how is it related to data science okay so first thing is anything that you do with data to get insights from it is data science right now mm -hmm. so your data engineering is also data science your business analysis is also data science your storytelling dashboarding using tableau is also data science along with of course ai is also data science so i would say right now anything you do with data is kind of data science however what is the differentiator between ai ai is basically certain tasks that probably only humans can do or humans are good at doing for example uh, you know sarcasm understanding sarcasm understanding double meanings right mm -hmm. uh, there could be puns uh, there could be uh, you know uh, words with the same uh, you know uh, pronunciations but probably mean different things you know those kind of things are you able to understand in the context which generally human beings you know can if you look at the video you can you know uh, differentiate between if it's a cat or a dog what type of cat it is if you look at you know human beings can do that but can the machine do it if the machine can do something which humans are very good at doing probably that is ai you know detecting human emotions detecting you know whether this particular person is angry or not detecting a face yeah detecting the type uh, you know of uh, uh, i think right now ai is also used in uh, computer vision and image recognition as well so that is another uh, area of application of ai all right so um, as you must be knowing newton school also has its own data science course as well and we have a lot of you know budding and aspiring uh, data scientists data analysts and all uh what advice would you give to all these people out there who are who have started their journey of you know either learning recently or just have moved into this industry recently okay so my advice would be that you need to revise things right very simple you know nobody tells you but and very underrated statement i know you have to do a lot you have to pick up a lot but if you do not revise things which have already been taught if you're a learner or you know something which you probably would have known and you have not used it for a lot of time then you know you'll forget it so you lose that skill so the best way is to revise if you cannot revise start teaching your you know uh, maybe uh, if it's a group study start teaching among yourselves you know explain what is happening explain to each other i think that is that is a good way of you know remembering things because data science is huge and you already know it takes years to master everything so 
uh, I would recommend that revise and then, you know, use as many sources as possible. Use, uh, you know, follow subject matter experts on various forums, follow the right channels and get more insights, you know, uh, from it. So hear data science, eat data science, drink data science. It's all about data science that you need to do to keep yourself updated. Amazing, amazing. So uh, one last question, uh, you know, Alka, because we have seen uh, the whole data industry changing from a very long time. It's not, uh, you know, like key data science just came in recently. It is happening since a very long time. So since then, the trends have constantly changed. So what do you feel the future of data or data science holds? Okay, that's a very good question because I think data science has been in use for more than 20 years, people were already, you know, were statisticians, economists who were using data science in Excel. If you see the data analysis plugin in Excel, right, you can do regression in Excel. You don't need Python for that. But why are we talking about Python now is because the data that we generate is huge and we need to process that large amount of data for which you need a programming language or you need big data. But yes, it has been uh, in the uh, in the space for a very long time. So we have seen technology evolve. We have seen hardware processing systems evolve, right? The GPUs, TPUs, and all of that, so that you have good processing power when you are working with AI. And I think right now, what would happen? I mean, right now it's the time when we are talking a lot about cloud. We are talking a lot of uh, operationalizing AI, scaling AI. We are talking about ML ops bit of it. But I think in future, it will be more of, you know, how do you solve AI quickly? How do you run models which take probably 10 to 12 hours? How do you run it in two, three hours? Mm -hmm. Right, I think that is something which probably would be the next problem to solve because space is not an issue because cloud has solved that issue, that problem. And you can always parallelize things. But, you know, I think it still takes a lot of time to run and um, that is something which can be uh, improvised. I think quantum machine learning is the next big thing that probably we can expect. We'll be using machine learning uh, with quantum computing to get, uh, you know, things faster. That's great. All right. So uh, thank you so much, Alka, for sparing the time out of your busy schedule and, you know, giving us this informative session. Thank you so much. And we loved having you here. Thank you so much, Ranita. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you so much. Thank you.